Hey gang, Uncle Todd here, and uh, finally caught up with uh, Criminal Minds, so that uh, come Thursday, I'll be able to see the new one. Uh, this episode uh, opens with uh, what is apparently a college student girl, who is trapped in a long ventilation shaft type style tunnels and she's crawling around trying to figure out where she is and why she's there and uh, meanwhile back at the BAU uh, Prentice and the uh, deputy director are having to make their case with the attorney general about why the Sicarius case should be kept open and uh, she says she'll review everything but the problem being, they have kind of overlooked other cases that are coming in. And so they hand Prentice and the deputy director a case of a dead body of a college teacher who was whipped with a serrated cat of nines and had a biblical chapter and verse from Genesis. Uh, basically the one of uh, the serpent having to crawl on its belly for the rest of its days and he shows signs of having had crawled great distances uh, from what's left on his palms and his knees and they now have a missing college student that they have to look for so while they're doing that because Tyler not Tyler Tara is kind of going through a bad time with her girlfriend. Rossi sends her out to look into uh, this animal chip that was found at the last Sicarius stronghold. Uh, he tells her to take a few days, even though she says it wouldn't take that long. He says, because you need the time to come to terms with your emotional uh, heartache. He's been there. Now, Penelope has gone to Prentice and confessed that she kissed Tyler and that he is currently staying at her apartment. And in no uncertain terms, Prentice says, look, he's a material witness. You're working the case. You two cannot have a relationship. You have to break it off, which she promises to do. Now, as for Sicarius, he is extremely stressed out, and he's starting to have fantasies of killing his family. And at one point, during an argument, he snaps at all of them that he wishes they were all dead. And this just shocks everyone, including himself. He's always been able to keep these things compartmentalized, and they're not anymore. And uh, his wife tells him that she knows what he's really doing. And he's about to kill her when she says, I know you lost your job. Where have you been going? And he says, I, I've been going to job interviews. I don't want anyone to worry. And she tells him, well, he needs to come up with a plan because family depends on him. And his plan is to go off for a few days and get his head straight, which his wife isn't too pleased with. She grew up in an abusive family. So this is kind of ringing home to her. A third student has turned up missing. Now, that's the one we saw in the beginning. And she and the other student, they uh, connect with each other in one of the rooms in this building they're in. And uh, the deputy director is proving to be quite an asset to the team at times because during the interview of the parents of the original victim, he gets them to explain what the expunged arrest for him was. It had to do with dealing drugs, but it was a one-time thing. And that brings the connection to the first missing girl who 
had been someone he sold drugs to. And they find the connection to the second girl being in a sorority with the first girl. But they're not sure why she was taken if the unsub is into retribution for some past crime dealing with drugs. Uh, with the help of the administration, which, uh, again, deputy director gets them to help. And uh, uh, that's a pretty good scene where uh, the deputy director tells the, uh, the dean who doesn't want this all to get out. It's like, you can either cover your ass or you can cover your school. You can't do both. Or words to that effect. And this leads them to a janitor whose daughter died of a drug overdose. But the people that sold it to her and the people that covered it up are no longer there. So he is basically striking out at someone he can in retribution for those he cannot strike against. And the, uh, the whole thing about the sorority girl is that the sorority covered up the death of the overdose, you know, the whole thing. You know, sorry, you got to stick together, sisters. So they're on way to track him down. Now, this gets intriguing. He put the unsub pulls the most nasty tricks because he gasses the two girls. First girl is strung up and ready to be slashed with the uh, serrated cat of nine tails. And the other girl is in a room facing them through a glass thing. And she's given a choice. She can either take this girl's place or she can go through the, the uh, door at her side and escape. So, of course, she chooses to escape in the hope that she can bring help back. But that door is locked. It was all a trick. And then she has to watch the first girl get attack, get hit by the nine of tails. Afterwards, that girl is dying. And he lets the other girl into the uh, room and leaves. The thing is, one of the uh, blades on the cat of nine tails had broken off in the girl. And hiding from the camera that he's watching them with, because he's got the whole place rigged with cameras, they pull it out and come up with a plan. About this time, they have tracked down the old power plant that uh, is where the guy is, the unsub is. So while they're preparing to go in, the uh, two girls put their plan into action, pretending the first girl is dead. And when he comes in to take the body, the second girl stabs him in the leg with the blade, grabs his keys, it manages to get out the door and lock it behind her. She runs off and runs into Princess and the deputy director who, hearing the screams, had gone in. Princess goes to confront the unsub while the de deputy director takes the girl to safety. The unsub is holding the other girl as a hostage. And Princess tricks him with a Bible verse into letting the girl go and she'll let him go. And he lets the girl go. Turns around right into the gun of the deputy director and is arrested. Then, while Princess is taking him outside, the deputy director stays with the first girl to give her comfort and aid until the paramedics arrive to save her life. Win-win. Unfortunately, although they proved themselves to be excellent in the BAU, the AG still closes the Sicarius case. Meanwhile, Tara, in talking to the dog owner, who was the girl you remember back, like episode two or three, that was her dog, Moose, that they found a chip for. And they have, oh, is it a CTE? Uh, that camera stuff that they have, they have footage of it, of that day. Even though it was months ago, they keep all the footage. So she sends that to the FBI, and Rossi, going over it, thinks he's found Sicarius, although you can only see part of the face. 
As for Penelope, she calls Tyler, tells him, you know, they, they can't be together. He's a material witness and she could be called to the stand because she's working on the case. And you know, this relationship cannot go any farther forward. And he needs to return her key. And he says, yes, I'll return it. I'll drop it by your place. And hangs up before she can tell him to mail it. So he shows up. They, uh, they him and ha. And end up in bed together. Which leads to a very funny post credit scene or mid credit scene where we learn nerds are awesome in bed. As a nerd myself, I will concur. <laughs> yeah, pretty good episode. The uh, scenes where um, Sicarius imagines himself killing his family. You know, they have like two scenes like that. Those are harrowing because then they're actually not dead and he seems a little disoriented as if he really thought he did it. So, yeah, his character is starting to crack. The pressure is starting to get on him. And he had ended with digging up another of those boxes with all the um, paraphernalia for specific serial killers. So I'm not sure exactly what he's planning, but it doesn't look good. And uh, the whole relationship with uh, Penelope and Tyler, that is so cute and funny. And, and that ending scene <laughs> between the two of them discussing their uh, things post-coital. <laughs> He's for some reason laying on the kitchen counter with some magazines strewn over his midsection. <laughs> and, uh, and the whole apartment is just a mess. <laughs> And the neighbor had come by to see if Penelope was okay because she heard some crashing going on. And <laughs> kind, of, kind of reminds me of a scene from Mr. and Mrs. North where it was something similar. Although there, they first were trying to kill each other and then they ended up sleeping together. And then the neighbor showed up to see what the problem was because of all the noise. But that's another movie. Uh, yeah, things are really ramping up. Um, it looks like uh, they're going to be able to get a facial identity in the next episode yes. when there's only three left so yeah they're going to have to start uh, wrapping things up instead of spreading out like they were before and uh, yeah really good episode not much with JJ this time or Luke but uh, you know it's an ensemble some weeks favor other characters and other weeks favor different ones so yeah. Although, uh, Princess, uh, really funny this, this uh, episode, especially when she's dealing with Penelope. It's like, you've just turned my headache into a migraine. <laughs> Great line. Well, uh, that's all I have to say about this episode. Please hit like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.